Yo, what is up, Cup Check audience? Welcome back to another episode of Cup Check. I'm here with my co-host, Zach. And today we're going to be looking at spring training, uh, just results so far, uh, who's been doing good in spring training and who might be uh, climbing up the draft board due to the result of just good play in spring training. So, Zach, uh, how, are, how are you? I'm good. Uh, we've been cranking on a few vids today, but that's all right. We're talking about baseball. Baseball's on the horizon. It's coming coming up fast now. And we got to look at these these spring training stats before the season starts, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, which I'm going to just jump right into it and kick it off with uh, one of your favorite players ever, Francisco Lindor. Uh, Lindor is a guy, um, if my memory is correct, Lindor might just be the god of spring training because last year I think he was tearing it up as well in spring training, uh, which led Zach to think uh, Lindor was the number one shortstop. So, Zach, are you buying this uh, line currently for Lindor of hitting 474 with four homers to start his uh, his 2022? Okay, I have two answers for this. My first answer, I don't know. Because he was so bad last year, and he really struggled to find a groove on his new team in the Mets. So my first answer is I just don't know. I don't know what to think about Lindor these days. But my second answer is, yeah, I think it'll be great. Uh, four home runs with a 474 average. You, you can't just accidentally do that. And I know it's spring training, and it doesn't matter. So while I'm very conflicted and confused about what Francisco Lindor is this year, He's back. Yeah, I got to take that um, viewpoint as well. Uh, Lindor is currently going at ADP 62, so you can get him at a pretty cheap cost for, you know, a guy who has consistently been a first or second round value his full entire career. The question will be, we know Lindor can play when it's not in New York and he doesn't have the New York fans booing him. Uh, I mean, he's down in Florida or Arizona, wherever he's at right now, hitting the cover off the ball, feeling good. Uh, we'll have to see if kind of that Mets curse picks back up once they get back to New York. But honestly, um, I mean, where you're going to be drafting him, you're going to be drafting him over guys like Correa, Lindor, Story, um, Tim Anderson. Uh, I'm just not really, really, not really, re not really willing to take that risk, uh, drafting Lindor over Correa, over Story. Uh, those are two guys I'd rather have right now. But at the same time, Lindor could be a good guy to just go trade for after your draft. Uh, people might not be valuing him all too high. And, you know, if you get if you get Lindor, he might have some pretty solid trade value, especially if he starts off the season hot. Uh, it's a guy that people really like, and they seem to have forgotten that they like him. Yeah, and he did settle in. Uh, last year at the end, end of the year, Lindor's a pro. He has proved it for too many years for us to just uh, write him off. And so as we're discussing this more, I really do have, have some more faith in Lindor. Yeah, you know, uh, this is a guy who he's finally got his feet wet in the National League. He's going to be a little more adjusted to the pitchers that he's going to be seeing day in and day out. So I wouldn't be too shocked if he um, does put together a solid season, but at least for me, I'm still taking Correa and Story over him at this point. Oh, my. Moving on to the next guy um, that we definitely need to talk about, Joe Adele, former number one overall prospect, uh, really came up and just looked absolutely goofy, uh, was catching balls on his head that bounced over for home runs and honestly striking out more times than probably thought possible for him last year. Joe Adele currently – hitting 321 with three bombs and 25 at-bats. No, wait, no, not hitting 321. A 321 on base and a 280 average with three homers so far in spring. Uh, Zach, what do you think of the Joe Adele showing up to spring training ready to go? Yeah, uh, good start here. Strikeouts, as you said, were the big thing with Joe Adele. He has struck out six times in 25 at-bats. So that's that's a good pace. It's nothing nothing too high, nothing too low. It's a good pace of strikeouts for him. I think that with a guy like Joe Adele, who really has not shown it at all at the MLB level, 
I think he's a guy that you can take with a later pick that a lot of people have completely written off and you can, you can feel it out for the first month. That's how I feel about Joe Adele. And I think you'll watch him the first month he plays, um, look at his swing, look how he adjusts to MLB pitching and then kind of make a move from there. Cause he, he is very talented and um, yeah, I, I don't know if he's going to be able to put it all together. It's it's tough to say for a guy like that, but I like this start for sure. Yeah, I agree completely. Uh, Joe Adele's ADP at 258 right now. So really just getting that discount on a guy who could have uh, ample stolen base and home run potential. And, you know, the draft is uh, your league in the draft. It's really won in these late rounds. Um, the guys that people will be selecting around Joe Adele's uh, draft position are like Jock Peterson, Bader, Tommy Pham, Ian Happ. Uh, and I think that the difference between the people who really set themselves ahead in the draft are the people that take these risks by knowing the people who can have that explosive upside and then just taking the flyer on them later in the draft. So Joe Adele, kind of a guy that uh, has definitely risen on my radar of late due to spring training uh, performances and just another another exciting angel that could potentially break out this year. Okay, I got a guy for our third one that I really want to hear your opinion about. All right, let's hear it. Is this the year of Keston Hira? In only eight games, 17 at-bats, he's batting 412 with three home runs, and a 524 on base. Is, is this the year? Because I'm not falling for it. I do not think this is the year of Keston Hira. At the same time, I'm not falling for it either. This is this guy strikes out so much. And don't get distracted by that 412 average. He's struck it out six times in 17 at bats. So just not, not very good uh, splits there with the K's to ABs. Uh, Keston Hira at first base, though. Now, instead of second and in the Milwaukee park, which is a really good hitters park. So just another one of those guys that you have to decide if you want to take that late round flyer on uh, and maybe a potential league winner. If he ever lives up to the hype that people um, formally believed that he would have. But Zach, Sorry, you were, you're just completely, you're just completely out on Keston here or Keston Hira. I'm sorry. I just, I can't do it. He's Joe Adele has not had like as much time to, to try to prove it in the MLB. I know it takes time at the major league level. Um, but even last year, he, he got sent down and then he started going off in triple A immediately. So um, I, th I think he's one of those guys that, that unfortunately at the MLB level, he just can't perform quite as well as when it's at that like minor league like, spring training type of level. Um, so I'm not taking any shares of Keston Hira. That being said, I hope the guy finds it. Yeah, um, maybe we'll get some more interesting insight on this coming up soon as we might be having a guest, Kyle Moore, a well-renowned fantasy superstar who consistently wins his leagues left and right. Uh, he texted me the other day talking about Keston Hira, and, you know, I think Kyle Moore might be buying the dip on Keston Hira. So uh, a lot of split opinions out there on Hira, at least for me and Zach. We're not really believers in the strikeout uh, rate that this guy consistently puts up every time given the opportunity. But, yeah, we're cheering for you, Keston. Um, if you're watching, uh, just, just keep believing, man. Keep fighting through the strikeouts. Keep uh, keep learning a little bit through every AB and make these small adjustments. Um, another guy I want to touch on the list real quick, um, scanning the list here, Akil Badu has had a decent start to spring as well uh, with hitting 333 with two bombs. Um, the guy who kind of burst onto the scene with some pretty good like excitement last year. Um, any, any shares of uh, Badu, another late-round guy who could be a solid third or fourth outfielder, depending on your team needs? That's exactly what I think Akil Badu can be, a solid third or fourth outfielder. I don't think he has quite the upside of, of some of these other big prospects. But um, a guy, anyone that can come right into the MLB and start hitting 
can be definitely a solid third or fourth outfielder. And that's what I think Akil Badu is. Yeah. And a guy who he's going to have, it's going to be a second uh, year in the league. So, you know, he's going to have a little more comfortable. He's going to be a little, he's going to be a little more comfy in the league uh, being not a rookie anymore, obviously Uh, a dude who's on an exciting team as well. And, you know, just another guy, you draft him, he pans out, you keep him. Or you draft him, he doesn't pan out, you drop him and move on to whoever is hot. Either way, you will be fine. And Akil Badu, um, I, I, what do you think of this player comparison? I, I kind of view him as like a few years ago, like Tommy Pham level player or like a Randy Rosarena. He might have that 270, 20 homers, 20 bags potential. Uh, Badu definitely does get a little bit of stolen bases and, and really has shown some power. So uh maybe a good sneaky pick yeah yeah i i still like him not as much as as a randy but i do think tommy fam is is a pretty good comparison of him yeah. he he's got a good hit tool and he's an athlete he'll steal bags and uh that tigers team's up and coming man so so if he can solidify himself with a, a starting role in that that up and coming dynasty in detroit that'd be huge for him yeah. Um, another one I would love to touch on unless are you wanting to take this one or are you fine if I throw out a name? There's a there's one more guy I got to talk about, but you can go ahead. All right. I wanted to bring up Mickey Moniak. Um, obviously, the Phillies, another really exciting team, kind of keeping with that trend. Mickey Moniak, a former I believe he was a number one overall pick in what was it? 2017, maybe, Zach? It was the 2016 draft, number one pick. 2016 draft, Mickey Moniak went number one overall. Um, another person who has kind of been forgotten about, but Mickey Moniak showing up hitting 260 with three homers, um, showing at least some signs of growth um, and maybe some potential uh, still in Mickey. What do you think of Mickey? Does he have any fantasy relevance, especially if he breaks camp? Uh, for a guy like Mickey Moniak, I I honestly don't think that that he's going to be drafted much at all. I think he's the type of guy that you pass on the draft and look for him uh, on the waivers if he if he starts performing if he breaks camp. He's just a guy that I think there's too many steps to go to see fantasy success. That uh, I don't think you need to be eyeing him in a draft. What do you think? Yeah, fair enough. Um, I like what you just said about too many steps, but at the same time. Um, the guy with the pedigree and, you know, if it's not this year and if it's not fantasy relevant, he definitely has a chance to be at least relevant for the Phillies as they push for the playoffs and contribute in some way for that team. Uh, so Zach, who was that guy you were really looking forward to, uh, to highlighting? I'm interested. Yeah, I think we can wrap it up here with the saddest story of spring training. I think it's the biggest story of spring training thus far. Cody Bellinger, man. 17 uh, strikeouts, 17 strikeouts and one walk. It's sad how the greats have fallen. MLB, the MLB is better with a, a good Cody Bellinger. That was one of the most exciting times when him and Yelich were battling it out for MVP. But man, I, I just can't see a resurgence this year when it's unfortunate. It's almost like he's got the yips. He kind of forgot how to hit it. People struggle in spring training. That's okay. But but 17 strikeouts in one walk. What do we do about this? Yeah, uh, Cody Bellinger, a guy who um, uh, I'm not really sure what the ADP is. I'm going to look it up here in a second. But just, just a really sad story about a guy who was arguably one of the best, if not the best hitter in baseball for a little bit of time uh, just a few years ago. Uh, maybe a little bit of a head case, uh, not being able to kind of find his swing. But in recent interview, interview, Cody and Coach Doc uh, discussed kind of his struggles. And at least Cody in the interview, he sounded really confident. He was saying like, yeah, I'm not seeing the success yet, but I'm really working on stuff with my swing and I feel like I'm on it and I feel like I'm close to finding it. So Cody Bonger, a guy who, um, you know, I, I'm probably not going to draft like too early but at the same time, if I can get him later or if I can get him on waivers, especially uh, in the first few months of the season, I here's my bold take. All right. Cody Bellinger, 
It's going to suck for the first month or two. And then I think he's going to figure it out sometime in the later, ha latter, later half of the year. And I think he's going to be decent in the second half, but not the first. That's, that's just my take on Cody Bellinger. Yeah, I'm still taking Belly over some of these other guys we're talk, talking about, like uh, like Mickey Moniak and Keston Hira. I'm still taking yeah, Belly course, over him. But, like, ah, it's tough. He, I'm not taking him early at all. I'll look for him on waivers if he's there, but. ADP is 90.4, so you're going to be taking him, guys. You're going to be taking him over guys like Eloy Jimenez, Jesse Winker, Christian Yelich. Buxton. Buxton. Yeah. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez even on this list. You can't um, do that. You just can't. At, at this yeah. point, you, you really just got to let them fall and take these guys that, that are more of a reliable option. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to have to agree with you there. Um, that's going to do it for a little like spring training preview slash um, just kind of reaction to what's been going on in spring. Thank you all for watching. And as always, say long, sailor.